Thank you to Citizens Union for your perfect attendance at governmental operations committees and for joining us for the past eight hours. Uh, well, sorry, seven hours, 32 minutes. Thank you so much for um, sticking out this day. It's a long day. We, we have oversight over more agencies. It's just we need more hours in the day. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I send my, my real heartfelt thanks to you for, for sticking it out and, and making this, available, this time available to us. As you know, my name is Peggy Farber. I'm legislative counsel at, the Citizens, Union, at Citizens Union, a, a nonpartisan good government group dedicated to making democracy work for all New Yorkers. We serve as a civic watchdog, combating corruption, and fighting for political reform. The budgeting process presents an important opportunity for, in a vibrant democracy such as New York City's to take a good look at executive agencies being funded by the government, both the level of funding and the substance of what they do. Citizens Union has just short comments related to the funding of three agencies under review today, the Department of Records and Information Services, the City's Community Boards, and the City Board of Elections. With respect to the Department of Records and Information Services, it's a comparatively small agency with a budget under $6 million. The mayor's pre preliminary fiscal year 2016 budget appropriates $5.72 million and seeks funding to add two staff members, a project manager and an IT developer, to plan and develop an open foil platform. As you know, Chairman Kalis, the idea of open foil is to create a centralized automated online process for submitting, tracking, and responding to freedom of information law requests, and, as importantly, for making the content of the requests and responses public while fully protecting personal privacy. Open foil is a money saver. Based on the experience of the federal government, which has established a model automated open foil portal, New York City agencies would save an estimated $14 million a year with a fully functioning open foil platform. The savings come from the elimination of processing costs and duplication. But savings are not the only or even the most important reason an open foil portal is so vital. It's also a way to fulfill the strong mandate captured by the New York State Legislature's declaration introducing the foil statute, which I want to read into the record that we have because I find it incredibly inspiring about FOIL. The legislature hereby finds that a free society is maintained when government is open and responsive to the public and when the public is aware of governmental actions. The more open a government is with its citizenry, the greater the understanding and participation of the public in government. The people's right to know the process of governmental decision making and to review the documents and statistics leading to determinations is basic to our society. An open foil platform advances this goal by making it much easier for the public to track requests and responses and to see what has been made public. Accordingly, Citizens Union strongly backs the effort uh, to put the requirement of an open foil portal into law, specifically intro number 328, the open foil bill introduced by yourself and others on behalf of Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. While we welcome the efforts of the mayor's office to create an open foil portal without legislation as an administrative matter, we think codification in the law is necessary to protect the project against the ever-present risk that mayors in the future will not maintain the city's commitment to the project. This is a minimum requirement in today's world. Um, with respect to community boards, the community boards are building blocks of democratic planning in New York City and a vital place for local participation by New Yorkers. The boards are the first rung of decision making in the city's planning process on the issues that make for a livable city, land use, business permits, street closings, and city budgeting for local projects of all kinds. Their role in the life of the city is mandated in the city charter. Citizens Union believes that community board budgets should be independent of the city's political branches and should not be decided at the discretion of the mayor or the city council, which can reduce community input by cutting community board budgets. Rather, their budgets should be linked by a formula to the borough president's budgets, which in turn should be linked by formula to the city council's budget. Citizens Union recommends setting the budget of community boards at 65% of the borough president's budgets, with each board receiving an equal amount in addition to revenues for offices, electricity, and heat. It should be noted the city's Citizens Union also supports independent budgeting for the borough presidents. Um, I'm gonna move on to the Board of Elections. Um, for fiscal year 2015, the city adopted a budget anticipating a $111 million appropriation for the New York City Board of Elections. 
City taxpayers would provide roughly 109 million, over 98%, and state taxpayers about 2 million. After mid-year modifications, the actual appropriation for this fiscal year was 114 million. Yet the mayor's preliminary budget for fiscal year 2016 proposes a substantially smaller budget, 84 million, a decrease of 29 and a half million. 84 would be the 84 million would be the lowest budget adopted for the Board of Elections in nine years. Board of Election budgets adopted at the start of the fiscal year have been in the 90 to 100 million dollar range since 2008, and the modified budgets have been 96 million and above since fiscal year 2010, reaching nearly 130 and over 140 million in fiscal years 2012 and 2000, uh, 2012 and 2014, respectively. Although the city will not have elections this coming November, although I realize now listening to um, Executive Director Ryan that of course there are elections in November, just not ones that, that are, have a lot of splash, but the, but the um, political offices and, and the um, DAs um, will be going forward. So, so there are elections this year, and the second half of fiscal year 2016 will be part of the presidential election year with two primaries occurring before the end of the fiscal year. So Citizens Union believes the board should uh, be fully funded for, for it to do the incredibly important work that it does and ask the City Council to be certain that there is sufficient funding in the budget for the coming year. Citizens Union is concerned about accountability as well as sufficient funding levels and in particular has been a strong advocate of much greater transparency at the Board of Elections. We're pleased that the board's annual report reflects many of our recommendations the most recent report for 2013 contains a, a whole lot of detail that's very, very valuable. At the same time, the board is not reporting much data to the fiscal, uh, to, in the preliminary mayor's management report, something that y you noted, Chairman Kalos, and, and um, that is of concern to us. There's some ambiguity, I guess, about the board's obligation to report to the city in the MMR because the board is regulated by state law, but it's funded almost exclusively by the city. The MMR is a valuable tool for holding agencies accountable as it gives the public a means to measure an agency's performance against key goals and measurements, which are set forth in the report as targets. The MMR sets forth no targets at all for the Board of Elections, which we think is a wasted opportunity. Compare this to other agencies, um, and you'll see the value that, that exists in, in setting goals and seeing whether they're met. It, the public can see the department has or has not hit the target it's, it's set for itself. Because the MMR is an important accountability tool, Citizens Union supports efforts to amend the city charter to require the board to report its performance to the city on key goals and measurements, including setting targets as embodied in intro number 302. That is kind of basically all I have to say, and I'm happy to answer questions. During, during the uh, Board of Elections hearing, uh, we did go over the uh, PMMR from the Board of Elections, which they participate in regardless of the charter, regardless of a lack of the charter mandate to do so. Under introduction number 302 from Brad Lander, of which I am a co-sponsor, um, there are no specifics added. Uh, it's just saying that they have to uh, provide a report as part of the PMMR and MMR. Um, it, it, do you think it's just important to codify it, or would you like to I see? I understand that the difference is that, as I read the bill, the it would it, it would the city council and the board of elections and the mayor's office would would create the the you know the targets that are not in the report now. I, I, I realize the board of elections puts in a, a few stats compared to what's in its annual report. It's 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 really scaled back, yes. but it doesn't. It doesn't have any targets. That's the difference. So as I understand the, the, the lander bill, it would result in the, the board putting targets in the. W with regard to your recommendation for the community board, I think we had three members of three different community boards from yes. Manhattan come in and request and budgets. One, and the one in the middle said, I, we want independent budgeting. <laughs> yes, and they, they, they also asked for more funding than city council offices have. What do you, uh, if, if you were to, uh, follow the formula we recommend, which is setting the budgets at 65% of borough president budgets, each receiving an equal amount. Different boards have, different borough presidents have different numbers of boards, different borough presidents represent different populations, Brooklyn and Manhattan being amongst the most populous. Um, what is your, what does that end up looking like well, per they, board? They, I thought, 
at least one of them also asked for a uniform um, allotment for the for all the the, um, the community boards. I I assume that they that they right now reflect different populations um, or size of populations. I think the main thing, our main point, it's not that they be uniform, although um, there's there's merit to that, but the main point is that they should be budgeted independently so that they're not they're not subject to the whim of the political branches. And thank you for testifying in favor of open foil. I, I share yes. your commitment <laughs> as the introducer of the legislation and uh, I'm excited to We be, feel very strongly about uh, that. And I'm, I'm very excited to see it included in this year's budget. Yeah. Uh, thank you so very much for your testimony for uh, joining us uh, today. I'd 